Welcome back. This is still Wake Up Nigeria. Now we have with us Dr. Isime. And uh, now the discussion today is the causes of hyperpigmentation. Now, Dr. Isima is an aesthetic physician with Laserderm Clinics. She's certified by the American Academy of Aesthetic Medicine and Pastiche Training Institute. Her core is managing skin acne, pigmentation, disorders, scarring, and aging skin. I feel like you should be everybody's best friend. <laughs> Everyone who's ever had a skin condition should know your name. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank All you right, then. So hyperpigmentation. Uh, pigmentation, hyper, putting those two words together, we need to sort of break it down. So hyperpigmentation is a skin condition where you have an area of the skin that is darker than surrounding um, areas of skin. Okay. So this happens a lot in different skin types, but it it's affects a lot of um, black people as well. Okay, so it's not just uh, Africans, but no. also Caucasians can go through this? Yes, Caucasians, Africans, right. yes. So a lot of Africans or well, Nigerians feel that ah, Nothing do me. I have black skin. Nothing, you know, don't worry. There's nothing that a little Ori won't fix, <laughs> you know. So talk to us about what causes hyperpigmentation. Okay, so basically um, the causes of hyperpigmentation, we can split them into two. Things that are happening within the body and then things that are happening onto the body that we bring from outside. Okay. So within, we, we talk about things like hormones. When you have um, varying levels of hormones, you see things like hyperpigmentation come up. A common example is in pregnancy, okay. when pregnant women, especially as they go close to their, um, the end of their term, they have this mask of pregnancy mm. that is known as melasma. Mm. So things like that um, can cause hyperpigmentation. So another way to look at it is from things we do from the outside, so things like the sun, yeah. sun exposure. A lot of us here don't believe in wearing sunscreen. And the sunscreen isn't, to, isn't because um, we're black people and so we have the melanin. People have that mentality. But the sunscreen helps to protect the sun from affecting us, which would um, get us darker. So things like sunburns and also in application of some types of creams, some products. Especially, it's, it's funny, but people that are trying to lighten yes. and then use um, harsh products and then by the time they stop using it, they have that rebound hyperpigmentation. Mm -hmm. Also medications that we take can also um, give us that their particular, issue. Yeah, their particular drugs that cause photosensitivity. Basically what that means is when we're exposed to the sun, mm -hmm. we have a higher likelihood of getting darker. All right. Um, what I'm thinking about now is the fact that there are different types of skin. Are there more, um, are there some types of skin that are more likely to have hyperpigmentation? So for instance, oily skin or dry skin? Okay, so um, generally it's not, it, all skin types can have hyperpigmentation, but something that, um, f mentioning dry skin, a lot of dry skin people, people with dry skin, they have conditions that um, increase their sensitivity as well. So something like atopic dermatitis, okay. if not, if the skin is not properly hydrated, actually can lead to hyperpigmentation just as a result of the itching and all that. So it's not necessarily because the skin is dry, okay. it's as a complication of having that dry skin. Uh, but what about oily skin? You know? So with oily skin, it's more of um, acne mm. and then the result of having acne. So with acne, the type of hyperpigmentation we have is the type that comes up when someone has an acne um, pimple, has the scabs, and then that heals over and then, and then, then the dark, dark spots. So that is the type of hyperpigmentation you can see in people with oily All right. skin. So I've noted that some people have dark spots across the forehead yes and then under the eyes like around the cheekbone area yeah like there's that um forgive me market woman sunburn you know the market yeah. woman sunburn the mm -hmm. woman that sits under the sun yes. selling her wares has this burn here yeah so you're still classifying is it all sunburns that are classified as hyperpigmentation okay so what you just described now is it, it tends to come out more as ochronosis. So okay. basically what that means is that somebody that has probably tried to lighten their skin using products, oh, okay. they get a um, lot of these mixed products, so hydroquinone, mercury, mm. Mm. and then they use them, stay in the sun, 
that increases the likelihood of these things happening. And if you notice for them, it's not necessarily that that area gets darker. It's almost like there's a change in color of okay. that skin. There's almost like a bluish, greenish tinge mm -hmm. in some people. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a side effect of using those kinds of products on the skin. All right, so I want to talk about um, the causes, uh, other causes for hyperpigmentation. Uh, for instance, is it something that could be hereditary? You know, um, something my mother or father had and just passed on to me? So in that sense, possibly in terms of maybe the way um, the hormones are represented in particular older generation and then it passes on the same way. But in terms of core um, issues, may not necessarily be like that. It's more of um, things that we do or things that are inherent within us. So if, for instance, someone's skin starts changing color sometime down the line, mm -hmm. they say, ah, that's what happened to my mother. Don't worry, it's okay. It's not true. So it's, it's possible in the sense of um, the hormones and how it's represented, yeah. but not necessarily just that the person was just on their own. For example, if they do everything right in terms of protecting their skin mm. well, they may not necessarily have such an expression of hyperpigmentation or it may be reduced. Right. Okay, so now let's talk about things you can do to help the situation. Now, mm -hmm. you've noticed you're having dark marks, dark circles, um, maybe a darker forehead or a darker chin. What can you do to help from the inside and from the outside? Okay, so basically the first thing that you would want to do is to see, probably assess what's going on around you in terms of your current lifestyle okay. if there's any stress going on because like I said hormones can play a part and sometimes hormones are triggered by stress mm. then also we need to look at the skincare mm. we need to have good skincare practices mm. having a good um, uh, wash that helps to exfoliate the skin mm. wearing sunscreen using if you, you may need to incorporate using a retinoid so mm. but that's at that point it's be best to see a doctor okay. for that all right, so when do I know that it's so serious that I have to see a dermatologist? Well, ideally, um, once you notice something, you should um, possibly book an appointment to see a doctor because if, even if it may not be something too serious, it's best to have some reassurance that okay. this is what is going on and then this is the plan that we're going to mm. go up and how we're going to treat it. So it's best to, as soon as you notice any discomfort, because something that also happens is that people come in and it's a bit late um, mm. or it should have helped if they came in earlier to see us. So okay. That's the thing. All right. Is there anything I can eat that okay. would help my skin go back to normal. Okay, so uh, maybe I was really fair earlier on and then suddenly I get darker and then I just want to, you know, eat a healthier diet. What advice would you give me? Okay, so um, a good way to start is to take a lot of fruits, okay. um, things that are high in vitamin C, carrots, oranges, the likes. And then also if you would want to go with supplements, Vitamin C, vitamin E are also very good. But again, with supplements, you have to be careful that you don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. But what about topical? That I mean things that you can apply to the skin to bring your skin color back to normal. Okay, so with topicals, we'll be dealing with, and that's where it would be best to see a doctor, but we'll be mm. dealing with things that help to brighten the skin. Okay. So we have the hydroquinone and non-hydroquinone brighteners. Mm. That you'd need to be on a regimen for because mm. we need to use it for a period of time, take a break, and then go back if it's hydroquinone. The non-hydroquinone, you can use for a longer period. Then also, um, it's good to try to exfoliate your skin regularly, mm. but nothing too harsh. A lot of people, when they think of exfoliation, they think of the micro beads and things like, and beads that are very yeah. rough on the skin, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that okay. intense. Okay, so there is that whole apricot scrub yeah. that people <laughs> use that is so coarse, and they're like, don't worry. You know, just scrub yeah. and it'll, it'll be better. Are, are you doing your skin good or bad by using products like that? So with that, um, especially applying on your face, it's not necessarily the um, texture of what you're using. It's more of the content. So with, um, with us, um, we deal more with what we call the chemical exfoliants. So where you may not feel any grittiness, mm. but it still does a better job than the scrubs. But if, I mean, that may be a good place to start, but again, you need to be, to regulate how you use. And, and I guess you need to consult 
exactly. a, a dermatologist. Yeah, a All right, so now I, I would love to hear of a case that you were able to solve, you know. Uh, of course, you don't have to mention names as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. Uh, oh, no time, no time. Oh, oh goodness <laughs> me, we're out of time. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Uh, but Dr. Isima, thank you so much thank for coming for to talk to me. us thank today. You. Really. Thank you. Um, we you. have so much to talk about. Please talk to us on social media. If you have your questions on this issue of hyperpigmentation, use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. And uh, hopefully the doctor will be able to help out. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mary is standing by right now. We have some more of the birthday shout outs.